Um, we'll do roll call. Roll call. I don't know why I can't say that. Um, start with you, Emma. And we'll go around, and uh, I will mention before we do that that Maureen is online. Todd is here online, as well as I know I saw Amber a minute ago. I'm a master of K6 literacy coordinator. David Martin. Julia McKenzie. Kelly Tarbo. Cheryl Hammond. Lauren Fearman. Jeff Fishwick. Craig Peter. Jamie Mitchell. Jamie Dickey. Thank you. Um, and so we do have one, well, maybe two, but one addition, which is a new hire under, um, where do you want to do that, Lauren? New business. New business. I, and maybe we'll do that first. Okay. And then also, I think we can just do it when we talk about the budget, but um, so that my brain doesn't forget, just thinking about outreach. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Do we want to make a motion? Okay. Right. Second. Thank you. Uh, Dave B. Motion and Dave M. Seconds. All those in favor? Okay. Anybody opposed? Beautiful, thank you. Um, approval of April 2nd meeting minutes as well as the May 6th special meeting minutes. Okay. <laughs> Any corrections or changes to the meeting minutes as they were? Discussion about them? Yes. Um, I am a staff person, April 2nd. You get for that? <laughs> there you are. Got it. Yeah. Um, any other comments, questions about the minutes? So with the one correction of moving Julie from staff to board, the motion to make a motion to approve as amended. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Anybody opposed? Um, open board seats. So we did receive um, two requests to join the board. Um, actually, we initially received three, and one person had to withdraw their name. So we did have two. Um, I know at least one person is here. Do you want to speak to why you'd like to be on the board? Oh, sure. Uh, hi, my name is Jenna Colby, and I have a daughter who's in pre-K who will be going to kindergarten and fall, and a two-year-old who will be coming up through the ranks. Um, my family and I live in Ludlow, and so I, um, I don't have an education background per se. My parents are educators, so they come from a good education background and, and see the strength of that. Um, and I'm just, I see my family having a long relationship with the elementary school, and I would just like to be able to represent the school and help with policies and, and better the education system for my children and the town's children. Thank you. Good for you. Mm -hmm. And so, Lauren, correct me if I'm wrong, because we had two people uh, remain and we have two positions, we would just so the other candidate was Dawn, Dawn Hines. Hines. Uh, I, I, I did not hear from her that she wanted to withdraw her application. However, generally, we yeah, have someone here. I, I think the solution for them is that if the board is so inclined, they can approve the appointment of both of these candidates, subject to making sure that Dawn did not decide to remove her candidacy. We have a letter from her saying that she wanted to. Did she say anything else in the letter? I mean, did say. Um, uh, could we table a second? I was going to say she, 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 she You can, but that means that then you're unlikely to have somebody. I, I assume Jennifer will, once you say she's on the board, will go and get herself sworn in and then be able to be on the board for any future discussions including anything connected 
with budget and what you're going to do next. If you wait until your next scheduled meeting of June 12th to make that decision, you won't have someone on the board until, until June 12th. But which is completely okay. You could decide to do that. We could do it for one and not the other, right? We could appoint Jen tonight. Oh, no, so that's of course. No, no. Yeah. I, I mean, you can, you can appoint Jen and decide to wait um, and see if Dawn shows up. The only reason I suggested it is she wrote, she said that she was interested. She had said that she planned on being here. I have not had any information from her that would indicate that she changed her mind. So. I guess my feeling is that I just uh, would like to make sure she's a real person. I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure she is, she but is. Um, she is. it would be great if, I, I mean, that would be my preference to move forward with one. I think that's fine. Tonight and then uh, at the meeting when she um, yep. comes. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I think I agree with you. Yeah. So do we want to make a motion to appoint Jen? So may. Second. I second. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Welcome. So Jen, <laughs> um, you would go to the town hall, see uh, Ula, she'll swear you, and then you'll start getting all the stuff okay. and come to meetings and we'll be here and, and you're welcome to obviously stay tonight as well. Okay. Um, and the term, regardless of how long the term is of your replacing, you're appointed only for one year. Okay. So next January, you would have to get your signatures and go in to be elected. And our... Um, okay. Okay. Well, and you spoke to the select right? yeah, didn't you? to their media yeah. on that. So, and uh, my understanding is that they are, we're happy to recommend you and have you come forward. Um, would you spell your last name for our, our, um, our clerk who is online, you can't see her, but she's asking me for the spelling of your last name and I'll get it wrong. Okay, so it's M-I-C-H-A-L-K. You got that, Amber? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, communications uh, or comments? Oh, I'll make a comment. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, this is Teacher Appreciation Week, and I want to um, express my appreciation as a board member and a parent in the district for um, all of the work that our teachers do every day, the, the hard work. Um, and, uh, you know, there's there's no way to properly recognize sort of what they're putting into our community, um, but I certainly uh, deeply appreciate uh, their work. Can I jump on the Amber thing? Yeah. 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 Can I jump on that or two yeah. and extend that appreciation to the front office people? The schools themselves and the town clerk and whatever they have to go through the extra stuff just to get the vote ready. So I really appreciate it. All the stuff. Yeah. That was going to be my addition is all of the staff. Everybody that works with or for a school, I think, is a teacher, regardless of what their their title is. So thank you. And it's an extra appreciation for the work you all did to get us ready for, for Monday's meeting. Thank you. And, uh, it went as smoothly as it did in part because you lay out all the alternatives and then you did it very clearly. It made our work easier. Uh, any public comment? Um, Lisa Schmidt, I'm a Ludlow taxpayer. And I got paid after the meeting on Monday. Uh -huh. So I thought Don't I should tell come. Anybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just wanted to, to come and, and say, it, say it to everyone. Um, as a Ludlow taxpayer, um, I was a little disappointed in looking at our school, our, at our class sizes. And um, I, I think we heard from two teachers, we heard from a parent, and I'm, I'm just looking for maybe a commitment from this board. I know you talked about revisiting, but it, it does not feel as a level of taxpayer equitable. And so I'm, 
you know, just wanting to have some sort of a commitment to, to look at that. Um, you know, and if there's, if there's reasons, you know, then, you know, then share them. Um, but just as an outsider look, looking in on that, it just didn't seem equitable um, for me as a taxpayer. So I, I, I got Dave, so I just wanted to <laughs> share that with, with you all. Thank you. Mariel. Yeah, uh, Mariel Rubla. Uh, I would just uh, echo a concern for, you know, I, I think there's a lot of power in like, multi-grade classrooms and, and being creative with staffing um, in that way, but not just as a cost savings mechanism, only when it can be used to enhance the learning environment for students. And right now, Lobo Elementary School, like, man, I love that school and I love all of the teachers and everyone that, that works there and, and Deb and everyone, but it just, it feels a little bit like there's, you know, we've kind of swung in the direction of like, just really looking to save money on, on staffing in that building. Um, and I, yeah, just want to make sure that we're, we're looking really carefully at that going forward. I didn't, I didn't quite realize um, the difference between the two schools in terms of the way the classes were set up until I saw the slide that went up on Monday night with the class sizes in the one, two, three, four, and five, six projected for next year in Ludlow, um, and then the ones in um, at Mel. So, you know, I don't want to see any teachers staying away from the home. You guys should have all the teachers and everything, but, and I'm certainly, I know, not uh, the normal taxpayer who's looking for cost cuts everywhere. Like, I'm happy to pay for a great school, you know, so. But I, I do, I, I echo what Lisa's saying, well, let's really, really take a hard look at that. Um, thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, can I, can I, on that same subject, I, I had a question I meant to ask you. Yeah. Um, was, was, am I right in understanding that though you've combined all those classes, in fact, you've got one, one more teacher than, than, than you do classes, right? For next year, yes. For next year, right. right. And, and so that in, in one way, the, it's not as inequitable, you know, as, as it appeared, because even though it, you know, you've so, got a combined class, they have like we, one and a third or one and a fraction um, well, teacher yeah, for each one. about one and a third, one and a quarter. Right. Teachers per classroom. Right. No, I, and I, I don't. I don't disagree that we should. You know, look. Look again at our. You know, our class, our class size policy is we should be between thirteen and eighteen, and sometimes you can't be. You either have to be bigger or smaller. Um, and, and again, we'll have to keep circling back to that. Yeah. I know. Sure. Like, where would we, as a board, be able to just sit and brainstorm, like, the ideas and, like, what those next steps are if we, you know, I, I, it, it just feels like, as I'm talking or making, making suggestions or just ideas in my head when I speak with other people, I just I feel like we are so, like, bound by this, whatever act happened before where we consolidated and we're not able to like okay I, i've heard people say stuff about like andover some people wanted to come over from that right well oh andover has to agree and chester has to agree and cavendish has to agree and then we have to agree they have to agree and then we might have to talk to a lawyer so how do we get to that point <laughs> like i don't know where we bring that up i think those are things that we would have to, everything would have to be on an agenda, right? Everything has to be a warned meeting. So if you have a topic that you want like a brainstorm, to I think we should have a, a brainstorm. Right. I'm not, I and it's not like, an, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, if there's not an, a, another way to do it, but I think there has to be a, a topic and a, and we put it on the meeting agenda. So I, I mean, I don't know that we can just well, you have, can. You, can, you can put on the agenda that you want to discuss reconfiguration of schools. As, as we said, the Green Mountain School District has a committee, a restructuring committee, to talk about uh, trying to um, redistribute between crowded schools and underutilized schools. And they are bring up questions about the other districts. You can put those on the agenda, however, 
part of why, in, and you can have all of those conversations, but any conversation about a town wanting to leave, a, a, leave the district that it is part of, there is a statutory requirements, and it starts with the town. It doesn't start with the board. So you can, you can schedule it, and you can have those conversations to talk about it. Well, but yes. this board can't right. make that happen. The town has to make that I, I mean, I've heard from, like, this different, not just that one thing. You know, there are different ideas. People are floating around here or there. I can think of maybe three or four of them. I'm not I'm saying I'm on board of, with all of them or even any of them. Um, I'm just... I, I, personally, I think having a committee, which can be a committee of the whole, or it doesn't have to be three people, it can be all of you, so that you're not trying to have those discussions during a board meeting. So you can create a committee, and the purpose of the committee is to discuss possible different configurations of schools. And, that can, and you set that up, and you schedule a committee meeting, and your topic can be discussion about reconfiguration. And then you can talk about whatever you like under that topic as a, it has to be warned, it has to be a committee. And, uh, it, you know, that you, you as, you can't have more than four people get together from this board without it being a warned meeting. And the reason I'd suggest that is just that if you put it on one of these agendas, then you wind up either making it be a very short discussion or feeling as though you need one song. Dave seems like he has an idea. Well, in another lifetime, many, many moons ago, we did have a committee that worked for these kinds of questions. It was called the Innovation Committee. Lisa was on it. Ray was on it. I don't know who else was on it. I thought it was kind of... Do you want to... I think for a while. Um, I was on it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I, 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 can't okay. I, I felt that that was a pretty useful for me, the, the way to bring stuff up without it uh, getting knocked down by the bureaucracy. If you know, crazy ideas came up. And well, and I like the title of it because it's yeah. more global than restructuring. Yeah. Seems like we have an idea and we're headed in a direction, whereas innovations is more of that brainstorming. I like that. It was great. Yeah, it was a great, it was a great opportunity for. For schools to work together, and uh, there were a number of community members. Yeah, yeah as well, yeah. it wasn't just the was just board. The board. Mm -hmm. uh, might I suggest that we do that? And we started in like yeah. September. Yeah. When I mean, I feel like right yeah. now there's yeah. just too much going on, That's and so we have a budget. Nice. And mm -hmm. um, I would I would suggest that that is on your agenda, agenda for June yeah. to create okay. the committee. Oh, perfect. Suggest that. Yes. <laughs> All right. Good idea. Um, You've got a hand up online. I don't know whether you want to take public comment. Um, I think we're still in public comment. Oh, we are. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> but hang on. My brain wants to kick in. I thought we were in the I think taking public comment during public comment would be a good idea. <laughs> All right. And the hand online. We are good. It's Lisa. Lisa Marks, you're muted, Lisa. Hi there. Sorry, it's Lisa Marks. Um, I'm going to do my best not to ramble. I was at a training with Emma and Deb and uh, Julie Para and some other people today, so I'm a little bit fried. But I can say it was very successful. We were at an assessment training today for the district, and there were great things happening. So um, I I want to speak a little bit to the to the I guess class size and, and multi-age thing. I I can say that there are things being done, I think, to kind of move that along. I know Deb Deb and I have spoke about it this year some and she she has um and I don't know if that's who was talking about like that other teacher, um, if that was what that comment was, but she did put in the position of a math person for next year. And so when we talk about, you know, wanting this budget to pass i think this is part of why that's so important is because that's to help kind of level that out so that way when math is being instructed next year it won't be a full class of the double 
you know, the, the 20 kids or whatever, it's half that class. So, if, you know, you are, you are level sizing those classes during math instruction. Um, and I think one of the things that we started doing in Ludlow, and I'm pretty sure Mount Holly has this style as well, although it doesn't affect their numbers. Um, but in Ludlow this year, as we started implementing um, data teams, and one of the reasons we're doing that is to kind of catch kids and looking at data and trying to catch kids that are, you know, have some gaps and where we can help them and move them along. And, and um, you know, and that brings in our interventional uh, interventionalists and other people's supports into the, into the classroom. So you have the ability to kind of spread numbers out during this time. So that's another way that we're working on trying to kind of right size numbers um, throughout the school day. So I think, you know, I, I, I do want to speak a little bit to that. I think Deb is really working hard to try to, to do that. And that's, that's something she's trying to work hard to do for next year. So, um, I don't want that to go unnoticed because I, I have, you know, I definitely have talked to Deb a lot about that this year. Um, and, and that also multi-age is a very new thing for, for our district. I, really am a big fan of it. I think the connections you build with students in your classroom for, you know, having them for two years, you, you really get to know kids, you get to know their families, you get to know kind of what students need. And when they come into your classroom the next year, they hit the ground running. There's none of that lag time that you often have and the expectations are there and they kind of rise to that occasion. And the other kids, that are new to the class, I feel that they come along quicker. So you don't have that six to eight week transition time. It's a much shorter amount of, of time. So you're actually gaining instruction time then. So, you know, there's a lot to be, I know there are pros and cons to everything, but I just wanted to speak a little bit to that because I feel like there's, there's, it's so new that, you know, maybe we're getting lost and seeing some of the benefits in that too. So, um, you know, and, and the numbers are hard. I think what, when, you know, there are times that it is difficult too, but I think, um, you know, not to lose the positive sides to this as well. And, and I appreciate, I just wanted to thank Deb too this year for really trying to work to try to see what we could do to change that for next year. Cause I think, you know, you can't do much about it right in the middle of a school year. So, so that is happening behind the scenes for next year. Thank you. Uh, any other public comment? Oh, is this the only time for public comment? Um, we have it again at the end. Usually at the end. I'm just making sure. Yes, it is also at okay. the end. My public comment I'd like to make when we're talking about messaging. Okay. 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 Sure. I just want to, to make it clear that I support the budget that's going forward because <laughs> it's dire not to support it. So I completely support the budget that is going forward and will encourage others to support it as well. I just, again, like want to make sure we're, we're thinking carefully going into the future. And I agree with what Lisa said about some of the powers of the multi-age or multi-grade classroom because I've seen that happen. Any other public comment? Nothing on that? No. Okay. Uh, sorry. Superintendent's report. Great. Uh, so I also want to um, mention yesterday was National Teacher Day and Teacher Appreciation Week runs through Friday. We appreciate our teachers every day of every week and of every year. They work long and hard to support our students and our families. I have endless admiration for all that they do under some extremely challenging conditions. And not just one day or one week, but all the time, every day, every week. And I want to thank all of our excellent educators. Um, and we have just over five weeks of school left, which is hard to believe. Um, I'm sure Deb, uh, well, I was going to actually, I was going to say that Deb and Craig would talk about preparations and celebrations, but they're not going to because they're giving their continuing improvement plan presentation here. So I, I will share with you that the last day for students in uh, the elementary schools is June um, 13th. 
and the in-service days for our, our teachers, our last during school time in service day is Tuesday, May 28th, the day after Memorial Day. But at the end of the year, elementary school teachers will have their last two in-service days on Friday, June 14th, and then on Monday, June 17th. And I know that there are families who have kids who are in grade 7 through 12. Uh, I have no idea what Mill River schedule is, but at Green Mountain, because they had an extra day, uh, they have a power outage on a day in the um, early spring, the elementary schools didn't have. So the last day for middle high school students at Green Mountain is the 14th, and teacher in service will be the 17th and the 18th. High school graduation at Green Mountain is Friday, June 14th. I know that you both have celebration days planned for sixth grade in June. June 7th. June 7th, and you have your set? Absolutely. There's okay. a few things like field day and field but we're still working. So you'll share all of those. Um, I said it's, it's hard for me to believe that we're talking about that already, but by the time this meets again, this board meets again, on June 12th, some of those things will already have happened. Uh, let's see. Most of our central office time since we met on April 2nd, devoted to preparing for that April 23rd budget vote, which then failed. We've been preparing for the next vote. We all met the day before yesterday to get that forward. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the budget later on. We now have that vote set for June 4th. The administrators' goal-setting workshops have been scheduled for July 29th through August 1st. Emma, our incoming curriculum director, and Julie Para, our incoming technology director and current K-12 math coordinator, uh, have been talking about planning for that, along with Lane Newington, who will be the superintendent as of July 1st, and our principals as well. The date for the all-board meeting. Our retreat goal setting workshop has been set for July 12th. I've confirmed that with Debbie Sennheiser of the VSBA, the Vermont School Board Association, who will be doing the facilitation of that. Uh, now that all of that is confirmed uh, and our board chairs and incoming superintendent will speak with her about structuring that day, um, I'm sending out a request to Jackson Gore to see whether we can use their cornerstone room again this year, but the location for that won't be completely set. That is also a public meeting, although it is in person only, it is not on Zoom. Um, all teachers have signed and returned their contracts for next year or have notified us they're not returning. All of our open positions are posted. I said at the TRSU meeting in the Green Mountain, this has been the most efficient year we've ever had of getting those contracts out, having our principals um, approve them before they went out, and then making sure that if people didn't return them, that we followed up about it. It just happened smoothly, quickly, because of the collaborative work we have, and because Allison Sexton, who is our HR person, she's been here for a little over a year. No. Three years? Three years. Well, it's not three. No, two years. Right. So <laughs> no, no. Well, we had a we had a revolving door there for for a year. Um, so um, then, and she has just done a beautiful job with it. So we want to be sure that we give her credit for that. Um, let's see. We're seeking um, approval of a new hire for the Mount Holly Preschool a little bit later tonight. We added that to the agenda. I hope to have the climate surveys ready for posting. I'm a little busy with budget things, and I don't have that ready for you. We'll get it up as soon as we can. And then a couple of things outside of school. Um, most people have heard the state Senate voted not to approve Zoe Saunders as the Vermont Secretary of Education. The primary reason stated for the no votes was her lack of experience in public schools. She has never been a teacher, a principal, or a superintendent. When the Senate did not approve her appointment, when the Senate did not approve her appointment, Governor Scott then immediately appointed her as interim secretary of education, a position which does not require approval from legislators. There will certainly be a great deal of discussion about how all of that will play out. Um, for our new board member and for anybody who is still feeling new, the Vermont School Board Association runs a new board member academy. There is still one more of those sessions this year. Most people were elected in March, so they run them in May. That will be on March 15th. 
May. I'm sorry. It keeps so hard. <laughs> it will be on May 15th um, at, at, from 5.30 to 7.30 on Zoom. If you go to the Vermont School Board Association website, which is vtvsba.org, there's a place to register for that. Um, also available on that website is a recorded webinar from back in February about how all board members can engage in legislative advocacy. And you can access that recording from the VSB website. And given the concern that a great many of us have, and board members have, about what is happening at the state level, that is a good recording to look at to get some suggestions about the power that board members can have to have their voice heard. It's recorded, so you can watch it whenever you like. And it, it is, uh, and if you have not already, lots of things are available to the public. Not everything is, but if you are a board member, and I therefore have shared your name and address with the VSBA, you should be receiving these regular updates from them, and you can go and check those things out as well. That's what I have for you. Lauren, I have a question, just if you know the answer. Um, the interim position for Zoe. Yes. Is there a time limit on that or not that I know? Oh, that. And that may be the case. Um, we had um, we had Heather as our interim for a year. And 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 there may be something that says that after a year, you have to put forward as a candidate. But I'm not sure that it doesn't say you can put forward a candidate, and if it's not approved, you can appoint it as an interim again. That'd be fun. All right. It'll be, it will be interesting to see how it plays out. Uh, principal's report slash CIP. Are we doing nothing for you guys at all? Okay. No, we're we're going to present them this year. Yeah. Okay. It was just on there as yeah. two separate things. I, I wanted to make sure. Them. I'm sorry. Um, and so we're up to CIP. Let me make it possible for you to be up there. Thank you. Um, okay. So, um, so if you remember in March, we uh, reviewed the uh, SIP with the board. Um, and uh, part of this process is uh, we had shared the actual document, the written document, with you ahead of time. So this is really some key components of um, the uh, continuous improvement plan uh, parts that kind of drive the whole process itself. Um, so as you recall, we the uh, continuous improvement plan is a requirement from the state of Vermont. Um, we, utilize, we, need, we need to submit one at the uh, SU level as well as the school level. Um, we use it to drive our federal funding for grants. Um, and this is actually a snapshot from the education quality standards, page 14, um, that um, asks that the school board shall approve the plan. Um, which at a minimum should include the goals, objectives for student learning, education strategies, and activities specifically designed to achieve those goals, which Craig and Deb are going to talk about tonight, um, as well as strategies and supports to ensure that school, school maintains a safe and orderly environment, which requires that we have an academic, as well as a safe and healthy school goal, and then um, any additional uh, technical assistance uh, that the Vermont Agency of Education um, has provided for us. We have not, as a um, LMH, been determined for equity two or equity one supports. It's really just a requirement that we um, submit this. So we are not getting any um, additional comprehensive supports um, on language needs. And um, I'm just going to share again our vision here that the Two Rivers Supervisory mm -hmm. is committed to guiding students to be adaptable, empathetic, responsible, collaborative, strong communicators who engage in critical thinking and achieve academic excellence, um, and that we're striving for excellence, all students, all staff, every day. Um, and so uh, another piece is part of the process is to do an extensive um, look at a data, data inventory and then do root cause analysis, and from that, um, one of the other boards, uh, at, well, the GM board, um, asked specifically to include baseline data in here. So you'll see that the um, little key locks are suppressed. Um, we follow the Mon AOE snapshot, uh, which is suppressing and size of under 11. Um, so that's why uh, when you're sharing that information, 
it's there. So this is the ELA baseline data for BTCAP, which is our state assessment, and then our math baseline data uh, for BTCAP as well. Work. So uh, back in March, we talked about a theory of improvement for <coughs> academic proficiency in both ELA and math. And basically, if we continue to implement the structured literacy um, instructional approach and the math, um, the systematic approach of instruction, using the documents and programs that we have selected, we should and see, see improvement in our student learning. Um, and along with safe and healthy schools, we will also want to make sure that our students have a sense of belonging and feel part of our community and feel like school is a safe place for them. So therefore, we continue to look at how we can build a sense of belonging and trust. And if we build that for students, we know that that will improve their academic performance. So those are our theories of improvement. So. Our goals at Ludlow Elementary School will be to improve the number of students in grades three through six, demonstrating proficiency on the BTCAP, EL, and that's the Vermont Comprehensive Assessment Program, ELA assessment as measured by growing the percent proficient by at least 20 percentage points at the building aggregate level. You saw that we were grayed out in many areas because some of our class sizes are really small. And when you have a small class size, less than 10, one student can be 10, 15%. So we have to kind of look at the school as a whole and not parse it out to be really small, but we still want to see students grow. So some change ideas. So kind of backfilling that instructional practice. So the, the BTCAP assessment program is given to students in grades three through six, but that's not where our students learn to read. Our students learn to read in kindergarten and first grade and second grade, and then shift to reading to learn in third grade. So we, we're, we really need to start to build that foundation. So our change ideas are to develop an awareness of segments of sounds and speech and how they link together with letters, um, to teach students to decode words, analyze word parts, and write and recognize words. Those are um, foundational skills for reading. And then screen all students for the potential reading problems at the beginning of the year and again in the middle of the year. Um, in public comments, you heard Lisa Marks talk about the implementation of our data teams. We look at data on students weekly. So we are constantly revisiting, seeing where kids are, making changes, making sure that they're accessing what they need as learners. And the fourth change idea is to provide intensive uh, systematic uh, instruction in the three foundational reading skills and small groups to students who score below the benchmark scores on the universal screening. Again, those are places like our data teams where we look at that data. In math, um, we will improve the number of students on the, the BT cap demonstrating proficiency by the end of 2026. And we'll do that by defining effective math instructional practices, by orchestrating productive math discussions, and then also providing time within the schedule for the skill practice, just like in reading where students need that practice of letter um, recognition, letter sound, letter identification. Our students need those same types of things in mathematics. They need to understand and recognize numbers. They need to understand counting patterns, they need to be able to do one-to-one -one correspondence, and we need to continue to monitor that a bit and grow that. Um, for safe and healthy schools, we don't have a current tool to evaluate our social-emotional learning. So by the end of 2026, we hope to find a screener and use that screener to get some baseline data. and. We hope that students will sh uh, show a growth in the sense of belonging. So change ideas will be to pilot and adapt a universal screener, to modify the classroom learning environment to be more inclusive, 
can teach and reinforce new skills to increase appropriate behavior and preserve positive classroom climate. A lot of things that we're already doing include um, things around ruler and having a school charter and teaching kids about their emotions and their feelings. And, you know, we have our charter of being safe and kind and responsible. And we live that and breathe that every day. Okay. All right. So we um, had a big picture. You know, we are working in Mount Holly School with our leadership team and our entire faculty to develop our continuous improvement plan. And we're also working collaboratively with Deb and um, all of the ideas that she just articulated, as well as being in sync with the overarching goals of the TRSU. So you'll see a lot of common threads through um, both of our presentations. We have the very, the very same theory of improvement that if we implement structured literacy approach that emphasizes highly explicit scaffolding, cumulative diagnostic and systematic teaching of both language comprehension and word recognition, strands of the reading rule that are reinforced by the creation of a comprehensive and balanced assessment system then instructional decisions will be improved and literacy achievement for all students will increase. A similar theory of improvement on the mathematical side, if we implement a thoughtful and thorough lesson planning process that includes a structured formative, formative assessment system, then we'll ensure equity by providing the appropriate context for learning with layered supports and instruction that is responsive to the needs of all students. Safe and healthy schools, equity one, if all TRSU educators act on the belief that students can achieve high standards as a result of effective teaching and foster inclusive learning environments for all, and students will feel a sense of belonging, trust, and safety, and their academic outcomes will improve. So by June 2025, Mount Holly will improve the number of students in grades K through six demonstrating proficiency in reading achievement from the current level of 50% on grade level or above to at least 60% and to at least 65% by June of 2026 as measured by both the uh, NWEA MAPS reading assessments, reading and the VCAP statewide reading assessments. The first change idea is to develop that basic fundamental uh, understanding of language, understanding the segments of sound and speech, and how they link to, to letters. <clears throat> students to, teaching students to decode let words, analyze word parts, and write and recognize words. Three, screen all students for potential reading problems at the beginning of the year, and again in the middle and end of the year and then providing intensive systematic instruction on up to three foundational reading skills in small groups to students who score below the benchmark score in the university. Screen. In math, by June 2025, we'll improve the number of students in grades eight through six demonstrating proficiency in math from the current level of 55% to at least 60%. And then by June of 2026, at least 65% will be proficient or above as measured by the MAPS and VCAP assessments, mathematics grades three through six. And the three key change ideas are defining effective math instruction, orchestrating productive math discussions, and providing additional time within the schedule for math skills practice. Then we also do not have beyond our climate um, survey that we have been doing every year. We don't have a uh, screen. So we are also evaluating, choosing, and implementing a social and emotional learning screener. We'll collect baseline data by uh, June of 2025. We're, 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 we're four years into our um, partnership with Yale University and the Ruler program. So we're going to pilot um, 
this uh, by next June. They have a, a screener called the SARA, and it is a pretty comprehensive screener, um, but we will also be open to other um, tools. Um, and then uh, our intent is for students to show growth and their sense of belonging, trust, safety um, by June 26th. Uh, by whichever metro you end up selling. Um, so obviously the first change I do is to pilot and adopt that screener, the modified classroom and learning environment to be more inclusive, and to teach and make first force to use skills to increase appropriate behavior and preserve a positive classroom climate. And four years into this process, uh, a lot of the same elements that that described in terms of classroom charters and all the tools, um, we're seeing real growth and development, but we can't quantitate it. It's really anecdotal, but we're seeing really high level approaches among students, problem solving and resolving conflicts. Any questions? Thank you. I guess I know what I'm talking about when I ask the question, but what about special ed kids as they fit in, how they fit into this whole scheme of things? All of that applies. Yeah, it all applies, but it's a really excellent question. Um, from the TRSU level, and this applies also to LMA to level and out quality, that really if you're thinking about closing any kind of equity gap, you really want to focus on how you can support the students in um, outside of that, in the core instruction, but also how you can really support the students in that area as well to boost their academic achievement, their social emotional skills. So it includes that all students and especially those students who need the most attention. So it includes them as well. But if they, I don't know if you worry about um, if they're not as quick as some, some of the other kids, um, does that, you say more than effort or resources apply toward them, or will they drag the rest of the class down? Um, I, what I, I know to be true is that students, um, you meet the students where they are, and you think really strategically as a classroom teacher about what the evidence says around what best practice supports most students in a certain skill area. And there's actually quite a bit of research that people that beyond education researchers at the in, in universities do to have these evidence-based practices that meet more students in a certain area in math or in uh, awareness, for instance. And so utilizing um, a lot of districts, we the job programs that are the practices are built into the curriculums and the programs in order to learn about more um, quickly how those practices that are research-based that meets more students where they are uh, in to be put into uh, classrooms so teachers can utilize, have, learn how to utilize those practices that are um, proven by evidence to be more highly effective to meet more students. And would, would also say that the students who receive additional support and who are classified as receiving uh, services for special education encompass a wide variety of needs, and 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 that not all of them are about uh, cognitive or developmental right. issues, mm -hmm. and not all students who have some additional academic challenges are on special education need get additional special education. So it's. I, I, I'm sort of getting your question, which is how do we meet the needs of all of our students? And just that students have a wide variety of needs, whether they are receiving special education or not. So every, everybody is on this spectrum and, and uh, of finding some things challenging, some things um, less, less challenging. And as Emma was saying, the goal with all of this is to meet each individual student where they are and make sure that we provide supports for them so that we're not in a position of saying that students who are ready to move faster can't, whether they are getting special services or not, and students who need some additional help, whether they're getting special services or not, are not being told we can't provide them for you. Do we use kids to help kids? Oh, yes. 
100. Uh, that's the vision. Yes. Okay. Um, the other thing that I want to add too, in terms of our multi-layered system of support, which are, we have a real vision and framework that we're working towards. Part of that is um, like visualizing where we have um, layered um, layers of support, and so we utilize interventionists and special educators as access specialists to support students in their or using their learning profile in collaborating with core classroom teachers and providing an access point. So they are removing the access barriers so the student can get the core or curriculum, the content, um, with collaborating with the teacher to understand what the instruction needs to happen in order for the student to demonstrate proficiency with a certain standard of our learning target. Maybe we would really answer this to get me to have. How do we prevent then maybe we we'll it? Um, um, kids that might be in special categories, whatever they may be, who are having that as a stigma or whatever. I think that goes back to really recognizing, just like everyone in this room, they all have strengths and we all have our challenges. So we really um, are focused on learning as a process where we make mistakes, we, you know, we so that we learn something and then we forget it and we have to learn it again. So, yeah. <laughs> I'd also like to pull in on the theory of action. This is also in both, this is uh, linked to TRSU, our overall theory of improvement as well, that um, if we believe all students can learn and achieve high standards and, and create environments where there's a sense of belonging, trust, and safety, then the aim is that everyone it creates inclusive environments where that stigma is not there. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the theory. And it's that part of that belonging too, right? That, that everyone feels like they're part of the community, and no matter what our strengths and challenges are, we're all in it together. And no one's no one's above or below the other. Did somebody see it go up online? Thank you. Thank you. I thought Great so. Question. Uh, the, I would also say that while we have, again, we have a large number of students within our SU who are identified and receiving special education services, a remarkably tiny percentage of that are for students with any kind of severe cognitive. The majority of our students with the additional special support can meet all of our academic standards as written. They just need to take a little longer sometimes to receive a different kind of scaffolding. It is not that they can't get to that kind of thing. Oh, I, was, I thought somebody online, and I thought it was Julie Perra raised her hand a long time ago, so I wanted to get back that, to that. That may be the case, but I'm not seeing that. Okay, hand maybe she... Um, I, I, I mean, I, I put my hand down because some of what I was going to say was already said, but what I, what I would add is that I think that um, historically there's been sort of an either or, like either we can meet needs in core instruction or we need to do special education and, and intensive needs. I think that this all students approach that we're trying to get at is all students are part of core instruction and we're meeting the diverse needs as best we can there. And we're trying to identify clearly what the unique needs of learners are, whether it's related to a special ed, special ed eligibility criteria or something else, and provide the layered supports that are needed to, so that they can better participate in that core instruction. That's a lot of what the change ideas that you're hearing about are focused on and what our MLSS implementation is. So it, it, it's sort of trying to make a shift from the either or to the both and. Do you have to get kids out of special ed? Yes. Of it? Oh, yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. I just spoke with somebody this morning talking about having that happen and uh, what a success it was for the student in the family. And I think bringing it back to the step two consistently, these are just change ideas that will try and change. Um, and even as this it releases this conversation, we're thinking um, with some um, speech and language pathologists around neurodivergent. Um, and neurotypical, kind of thinking more about understanding the brain science of learners and of more diversity and understanding the brain and how the brain works and um, providing some additional training for educators around understanding how, what common language is around that 
and then how we can make um, best instructional moves to better support more of the diversity of the learners in our classrooms. Um, okay, so thank you. Um, yeah, um, th thank you for the presentation, Paul. Um, I, I really appreciate the sort of em embodiment of the drive for excellence, which is one of the values. Um, Emma, I was wondering if you could put the slide back um, that showed the baseline uh, metrics. Um, you want yellow or no? So, um, and do you know when when was this captured? I, I heard, I think, in Lisa's remarks that, that there's constant data. Um, but, like, um, how often are you looking at the data? Uh, well, this is actually the snapshot data from the BT Cap Vermont Common Assessment Program from 2023, from the spring of last year, um, which we're utilizing as our as our as our goal setting. We administer. We were, as Lisa just articulated, we were at a conference today that the Vermont AOE was was doing around assessment literacy and looking at <clears throat> the many different kinds of assessments that feed into a common. Um, about, uh, comprehensive balance assessment system. So we have assessments outside of this to progress monitor in Mount Holly, for instance, Craig mentioned um, the NIWA or um, NWA maps assessment. So we let, we implement, we um, run that assessment three times a year in ELA and, and in math too to end uh, in order to get a sense of where students are um, as a benchmark assessment. And then we have other assessments have different purposes to run diagnostics, for instance, around teasing out what specific area we might need to learn more about in terms of if they're, if they're, if they're scoring below the benchmark, for instance, why, so we can learn more and then progress monitor what instructional strategies might help support a student. At the individual level or at the class level? At the individual level. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, in class, and, you know, there's like foundations assessments for each it's both. It's, it's targeted to individuals, but it's also very nice. Class. So just focusing on this, the schools in, in our district here, um, Lobo Mount Holly, um, can you go to the map one? Um, like, uh, you know, fourth grade in Mount Holly, fifth grade in Ludlow, you know, the, those strike me as real outliers. Um, and I'm just wondering, um, what kind of, uh, you know, surveillance intervention, uh, whether that, um, that is anticipated as part of the new um, uh, continuous improvement plan or whether there are ongoing efforts in those areas, because they, they really seem um, strike, you know, outside of the pattern of the rest of, of the and I'm going to actually give the, have the principal speak more directly to that because this is the area of why the change ideas are strategic in how it applies to each building and what efforts are made. And, and they will talk specifically about what they're looking at. It will just remind everybody that the, this VT CAP data was a new assessment that was sprung on all schools in the state of Vermont last year. They did away with the previous assessment, the Smarter Balance Assessment. They introduced a new assessment. They did no field testing of it. They gave no practice tests of it. It truly, and that doesn't make it a bad test, but there was there was no preparation for it. It truly is baseline, and it's a good place to start with a baseline. We'll be interested to see whether we see differences now that people have had a chance to think about what the differences with the test are. Then there were some, you know, when they don't feel tested before you give it. Sure. So are, are you, is what you're saying that these, uh, these can, you know, results that we're seeing here are out of step with the other assessment uh, tools you were using? The, they, they, are, they are different because it's a one-time thing and that you don't get to see this assessment again until, until you look at it a year from now. The other assessment we give the NWEA, it is not this. This is a criterion reference test. They set a standard so that they will tell you that you know fifty percent of the students met the standard they set. 
The NWAA test is a, a, what's called a norm reference one, and it tells you how many of your students are hitting the average of everybody who took the assessment in the country. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it's not so good. Um, so in terms of whether it's out of step with it, they're not so out of alignment that we would discount these. But they're measuring different things. Um, can I can I add, um, Julie? I think the answer is both. Like we, this this is data from last spring. The testing for this spring recently finished, and the results will be available summer. So we'll see how it looks different. But we don't rely only on this, and this is too high level for us to know exactly what steps are going to make improvements anyway. So we definitely have other data that we've been looking at and continue to look at to try to see if it's consistent with this. In some cases it is, in other cases it isn't. And then we try to understand why that is. But at the end of the day, what you're doing is you're drilling down into what's happening in the classroom and what are students showing you that they understand? And what do you think they, what do you know they need to understand based on the learning progressions that will reach that academic excellence? That's really what's driving the change ideas. And the theory is that you will see this improve along with that over time. I, I would have to add, too, that um, our trainer even said this today, that VTCAP really is the state accountability and federal accountability measure of our school. And so they determine like, how to support schools once they have this data. So every bit of assessment serves a certain purpose, and this is helping for state accountability, district accountability in the schools, how they're running it once they have the uh, listening to what your descriptions, it seemed like much of what you described are things that you have already been doing, or been doing perhaps for a long time. You know, is it all new? I mean, what I mean, the question is, sir, what's what's new and different about it? Well, it's new and different for me because this is my first year in Lobo. Okay. Um, so, what's new and different is really taking time to analyze student work on a regular basis to look at what students are doing to recognize where their strengths are where they need to grow and building on those strengths and like filling in places where there may be gaps and it doesn't seem like prior to my coming into level that that had happened there but this year every monday data teams meet we look at reading one week, math the next week, and we rotate through. And we build groups, we shift groups, we change groups, we work with kids on what they need. So while that, that's new this year, we want to continue to grow that and have the tools to backfill some of the things that haven't necessarily been in place and build a stronger foundation for kids. And is that different than what... what we used to call response to intervention or, or multi-level. This is the third iteration. So okay. it started as RTI and then it was MTSS and now it's MLSS. So they keep changing the acronym, but the premise is basically the same. Mm -hmm. Some other things that are new as well are like we, we add some of our um, fundamental programs like foundations in place for years, but we have a new EL curriculum, which is much more rigorous curriculum for language arts. And Google um, is relatively new as well. I so. we also have to pull in that these are really, um, um, the changes are really thinking um, really responsibly about what we're learning from these programs and how this, we're changing our practices in the classroom um, at the core, like core level. So, um, you know, it's real specific, deep conversations around what we need to do in the context of the classroom to make changes to better meet students' needs. And so that change ideas, those change ideas that Doug and Craig are leading our buildings through are really um, going to hopefully, as we monitor those change ideas, produce the goal that we have we have for 2026. So we'll see that, um, and we'll monitor that through looking at NWA data and some of the assessments that we shared in order to make adjustments.
And can I just add to the to everything that's already been said from on the math perspective, one thing that's been new this last couple of years is to really put a focus on two particular strategies that the research shows has high impact. One is uh, professional learning that deepens teachers content knowledge about the mathematics and how students learn the mathematics through learning progressions. So in prior board reports, you see me see me talk about the ongoing assessment project training that our teachers have been doing. We have more than half of our teachers who have attended that now, and you're starting to see that show up in the classrooms. In addition to deepening their content knowledge for teaching the math and how the students learn the math, it centers student work and formative assessment and classroom discussion about that work so that students can learn from each other. So those are pretty new for us that we use some of our ESSER funding to get teachers that experience. Um, and now we're starting to see how that's going to play out in the classrooms and what impact it's going to have. Okay. That's our funding would have allowed us to do that on the ELA side as well, to actually have a research based rigorous program. Yeah. Dave has a question. How, if at all, has COVID affected the tests and baselines? Um, that we're starting from, and is it is it based now? I'm not talking about what you guys are doing. I'm talking about the government and setting baselines. And is it a garbage kind of thing with these baselines, or are they valid? I mean, I. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dave. The, the 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 smarter balance tests, in my opinion, was a fairly valid test. Was they were good assessments. They have been. Then they were no longer the kinds of tests that you can teach. Students. And uh, there are always complaints about any kind of standardized testing and how they still live. I believe this new assessment is similar in the fashion of having things that when you are certain that students know how to think deeply and problem solve, that they will be able to be successful on any kind of test. But as like I said, last year was the first time we had it. We had not had any opportunity to see it or look at it until then. So, you know, that our, our, our look between last year and now, I, I, I believe it is a valid test that will give us good results. You won't really know that for another year or so until it's been around for a while. So they say okay. the visit, you know, is it valid or not? I, I, the way we'll know is by what we just talked about. It is if the other, because you want at least three data points in order to make a conclusion about where a student is. If we see similar kinds of results on the NWA on our other assessments, on local assessments that we create, you get a whole, you get a photo album instead of a snapshot right. so that you can look at whether, whether really just had a bad day when he did this or is this consistent with it. And all of those things together will let us know whether we're, whether we're seeing drop off or, or a plateau in the weather we're seeing it, it's hard to do that when you have a brand new case That's any other questions thank about you, the thank you i'm sorry to take no it's okay. great i think it's great thing it's hard for our meeting that's the whole point of doing did you have anything uh oh the, the one thing I, you had mentioned rti and so i felt like i needed to share this that the um the change idea for the fourth the fourth uh, which is around EL, this is ELA specific, but it's part, uh, responsive to intervention certainly applies to um, uh, math as well. Um, this is what uh, the evidence has fa have found um, to providing intensive systematic instruction um, in a layered setting, um, not, not supplanting core instruction, but in addition to, on up to three foundational skills. And so we're talking, I've spoken about what those foundational skills are to students who score below benchmark is really found to be as so so we're really trying to kind of tease out what's going to give us the biggest thing for our buck to maximize the needs of students given um time is of the essence so just wanted to call on for talk about that. sure any other continuous improvement plan questions comments thoughts and so we do need to approve this at tonight's meeting correct yes um, and so I would ask for a motion to approve. So many. And a second. You would salute. Second. Second. Thank you.
All right. Um, uh, yeah, all those in favor. Sorry, I got lost in what was going on. Aye. Anybody opposed? <laughs> the delay in the Zoom, delay, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so the continuous improvement plan has passed, and we are on to the TRSU facilities director report. Don. Okay, good evening, everybody. I'm going to try to be short because I know you have a long agenda. Um, I'm hoping to start off next month after our budget passes with some suggestions for capital improvement projects at both Ludlow Elementary and Mount Holly. So we can talk about that after our budgets pass, which we're all confident that they will. Um, so uh, the biggest news is I reported this at the TRSU meeting. We have great news finally on our PFAS project that we have now moved from a grant source to a loan. And the state has said it will be 100% um, forgiven. And the loan amount is $775,600. Um, that will include the construction at Mount Holly School Water System, including connection to the town garage and the construction of the new treatment building. Um, it will also include a couple of bills that Cheryl's been concerned about, um, just under three thousand dollars to Otter Creek Engineering. So they're that from 2023 that hadn't been reimbursed, and they're going to take care of that as well. Um, there's no interest rate on that, and there's no annual payment. So the state is going to foot the bill for the construction project of that. This is great news. We have some other hoops we have to jump through, but after reading through it, uh, sounds like it's the engineers that are going to move on that. And we're thinking from Cheryl and I talking to them that that project probably will get going in full force, not this summer, but the following summer because of some contractual and uh, some construction woes of finding contractors that have the time to do it. So this is all good news. This is something we've been waiting for for four years, and this is finally coming to fruition. So it's great news for Mount Holly School. Thanks for your help too, Todd. No, no problem. It was a long road, and I think we're we're not done, but we're moving. This is this is great news, and we're moving in a good direction. Thank you. That, that's all I got. Any comments, questions for Todd? Thank you, um, Cheryl. So, uh, not facilities. What are you? Financial. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in your folder you have. Apologize for my squeaky voice. It's getting better though. Wow, yeah. <laughs> um, you have April's financial, and I also did an update of the um, over under that I've previously done just to keep a record because I'm going through it. I'm like, I can't remember what I told you, so I'm putting it on the sheet. Um, now, but you did, we had the ruler renewal and tax control at Lobo, and I captured both of those as I just wanted my budget, so we're going to see um, how budget the next year. Um, maintenance, uh, an overage, so we had to replace a laundry group electrical panel at Ludlow this year, so that's put us over budget on that area. Um, that's the stuff we talked about, allowable tuition. I've added a section called Noteworthy, just to let you know some things that are going on that doesn't fit in either category, um, such as uh, we had tuition revenue budgeted for some number of students coming in, number of district students coming in Holly, and then they left in October, so we were not getting that revenue. Um, interest rates are up, under geek, Number number nerd, uh, we're getting good interest. They budgeted two hundred fifty um, dollars because it was so low, and you now we're at like fifty eight hundred dollars. So, not going to uh, solve our budget issues, but it's a little bit so. The paper. There we go. So we spent eighty one point seven six percent of the budget. We have paid out all the tuition that we're going to be paying out for this year, so that's a good thing to check off. Um, I do want to point out that the food service, we, we normally budget a deficit. Food service programs don't make money. We budgeted at 10290 We're currently at a $34,451 deficit. So we'll be talking about that. Um, the food costs are just, um, yeah. it's not labor, it's, it's food. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So that's the financial. Any questions on that? Um, so the other thing I want to tell you, I did reach out to the bank today because uh, normally 
at our next meeting, we'll be approving our tax anticipation line of credit that we do. Um, Lauren and I talked briefly about it today. So once the well, vote happens and it passes, because it will pass this time, mm -hmm. um, there's a 30 day reconsideration that our, our budget's not considered passed until we get past that point. So I uh, need to know from the bank and consult with our lawyer as well of if we're going to have to wait until into July to be able to approve that one. So I'll have more information about that on the July, the June And I've also asked the question of the process of this, this budget doesn't pass. What are the steps that we need to take just so that we can be proactive in, mm -hmm. and, and knowing what that's going to look like for us. But we're not going to use that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Cheryl, because this hasn't happened in a long time, when when it passes, if tax bills are delayed because of that, I think they were in the past. Does that affect us, make us have to borrow, or we'll um, have to cross that bridge when we get closer? We've been fortunate that a lot of times the town gives us money prior to those taxes coming mm -hmm. in. Uh, if it's that's again the town taxes as well, for them to have to school, I'm not sure if they'll do two tax bills of how they run it. So we'll have to cross that bridge, but we will maybe try to borrow a little bit more than we do, just you know we know that's that's happening as well. Thank you. Any questions or comments for Cheryl? Um the whole business. The budget. <laughs> um I I know that we have some stuff to take care of it and i just don't want to lose sight i think it would be important to spend a few minutes talking about uh outreach and and getting the word out there and that kind of thing as well and did you want is that where you want to start discussing outreach um, we have on the agenda the actual approval and signing of the formal warning you approved the budget number the night before last and, and I don't, uh, my assumption is that you don't want us to tell you all about what you would not have to do. No, 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 no. There's only two. That's weird. We can. But, uh, we have, in fact, explained it many times, but despite statements that we've never explained it. And we can explain it many more times if that would be helpful. But I'm assuming what you wanted, wanted to talk about yeah. here was plans for outreach. Oh, yeah. right. um, and uh, this is a good point for me to, uh, uh, I emailed everybody with an update after talking yeah. to our attorneys and getting some, um, some slightly revised information uh, about what board members and school employees can and cannot do. Um, board members can, in fact, engage in advocacy. They are not limited to information and, and explanation. You cannot use school money, school supplies to create or do things, but you as individuals can stick a sign in your front yard if you want to that says vote yes on the budget. You can advocate. That's teachers who are, and or any employee of the school, when they are not on the clock, can do that. So you also can stick a sign in your front yard that says, well, yes, on the budget. You cannot, while you are acting as a teacher or as a school employee, advocate for it, yes or no. You can always provide information, but you cannot, while you are acting as a school employee, advocate, and you can't use school materials for advocating. We can use school materials for information. So one of the questions I do want to hear in a more definitive way is, do you want us at central office or do you want to, and then share it with us, prepare information that is to be mailed out as a flyer or a postcard or to be available to be distributed within from the school. If those are things that we are preparing, they would be, they cannot be advocacy, they would be information. This is when the vote happens. This is the information about the total number. This is the location where you can get more information. 
Kelly and I talked already. We're going to put an FAQ together so that there will be a document that, that has frequently asked questions, which can also act as a talking point sheet for people when you go around to other places. We will share that in some fashion. Again, that will not be a you should vote yes or no, but it will be information for it. The, there will be an expense in sending something out. Uh, and we had the experience when we sent a we sent a postcard out connected with the Green Mountain Bond. It ran us about eighteen hundred dollars, but it was going to more people there than it would here to print it and then mail it around. And the response we had from people continued to be the I didn't see it. I thought it was advertisement. I threw it away. I still didn't know that it was happening. So we hear from people, you should do this so everybody would know. I'm glad to do it if if people, and one of the reasons to do it is that nobody can tell you that you should have done it, that you will have gone ahead. You will have done it. Maybe it will be effective. And, and it's not an enormous amount of money. But we're not going to do that unless the board tells us you want us to spend that money to send that information. I think personally, and I've already talked a little bit to Lauren about this, I personally think we should send it out um, as information to the people that we need to send it to. I know another district nearby um, that has put together a, a lengthy list, probably three or four pages of FAQs and really quick, simple um, answers to those questions. Um, and I would be willing to take the questions you've sort of been forwarding and getting from the public, as well as some things that I know that I've heard. And if anybody is hearing things, you know, just email them to me. I don't mind putting those together really. <coughs> My thought would be that then they could be shared via um, home notes, whatever newsletters might. My reason for thinking this way is because I think then they will get shared, people will get them, they will see them, they will screenshot them, whatever it is, and, and put them on their own social media, and that will happen, and then they'll get forwarded and shared with bigger, larger groups of people. One of the things I've learned recently, and I did not realize this until uh, a few weeks ago, the Vermont Journal no longer goes to everybody in our community, which shocked me. Uh, I get it at my house, but apparently not everybody gets it. And so um, I think while we use that as our paper of record and whatever, it got me thinking that people don't get their information the way they always have. Ted Crawford mentioned that we don't have town meeting anymore in the same way for the school part of it, and people aren't getting the information there. So. Uh, we know they're getting information on Facebook, and if we can get some good information out there um, and share it, that was my thought. And I'm happy to type something up and then have more approve it and then get it out there and, and do that. But I, I started the mailer. Google Doc. I will share it with you Perfect. and make you an editor. And then we can I the Mount Holly PTG or something. They put together a really good yeah. FAQ, I thought. That was in the news flash. Yeah, Katie. Katie. Katie, Katie Ski, I think. That no. I, huh? I, yeah. I don't think that, I don't think it was her. I thought it um I, it was I, in I, the news flash. Yes, and then there and there was one that ran the next day too. Right. Um I'll see if I if I will forward it to you. Okay, yeah. And yeah. I think I don't necessarily okay, see what, everything, obviously. Yeah, but what we didn't do was coordinate. You know, I did one, they did one. We didn't talk to each other. <laughs> well, um, right. Okay, and, okay, and, and, right. Yeah, yeah, I was to say, it goes to different groups that way. That's right. right. Um, you know, and, and so I think if PTGs and unions are, you know, outreaching as well, that's always that's so helpful. Um, and just being really super careful that they're not doing any of their advocacy during school hours. Um, when they're on the clock is super important because um, I don't want anything to be said that we then get in trouble for. Are you going to take, you've got a hand up on mine. Sorry. You know whether yeah. you're going to take public comments during this? Um, it, can we wait till public comment just to keep things rolling? It's is that you. good with everybody? The bond part was 13, 13 or 17. 
1336. So that would be, so we need a motion to. Uh, and you, you, yeah, it, yeah. It's, you would, it, if you, it, it will be more than that because everything calls for it. But my concern isn't so much about the, it's not going to be enormous. It, it's just, do you want to expend funds that are going to be probably in that, that uh, 1800 to 2000 range? And if you want to do that, I'll move forward with it. If you need a move, I think it's a good idea. What I will I mean, probably... I mean, as we said, it's, it's one, of, one of many, you know, in the end, we have to convince 30 people. <laughs> yeah, uh, so uh, yeah. what, I, what I will do is we'll, we'll put something together. I will, again, in an in informational, not a let's have a discussion about it way, share it with board members so that if you have something that glaring that you want me to adjust, we'll be able to do that without our having to come back and have a little more. So we have a motion. Do we have a second? Thank you. Uh, Julie got it, Amber, for your <laughs> records. Uh, and so all those in favor of doing an informational mailing. Sorry, Amber's got her hand up. Oh, go ahead, Amber. Sorry, you were actually just saying it right then. I didn't actually hear the motion, but you were just saying it. So I was too slow to drop my hand back down. Okay, so um, motion to approve uh, funds to word to be yeah to send out to information send about the the upcoming revote. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so all of those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? You're good, Brant. That delay happened again. I just want to make sure. Okay, so we will we you will do that piece. I'll start a thing. I'll share it with people. We can add to it, and we'll try to get it out and and moving and circulating amongst the peoples. Um, I figured out the last I did have an idea of flyers around with some basic voting information and a QR code. I think we used to go to like the the website. You know the rest of it. And, and we can put in the budget folder a FAQ document so you can have a QR code that people can take a picture of and be directed to that information of course, if you want to do that as well. Yeah, I think anything we can do is, is good. Um, and I just I think it's about how we should do you have, do you have, do you have a feel for what love loves you? As far as get the information out? PTA, if we ever pull that stuff. Well, I'm waiting for the board to right. right. Yeah. yeah, and I think the PTG was going to well, do I mean, some however, things. However else. Well, this would be for every, all, all, both communities. Yeah, I understand. Right. Yeah. Right. And so I know the PTG worked hard. I know some individual community members worked hard. There were even some very nice, um, I don't know what the word is, but I always call them like memes, but they're not memes because they're not jokes. But informational graphics. There you go. Thank you. That's the word. Um, on on Facebook that I saw a lot from some Ludo community members. And so I know that a lot of things were out there before. Um, and and so I think if we can kind of kick the ball a little bit, it will start to roll faster and snowball. The the uh, one other suggestion that was made um, at the meeting of the district was uh, the possibility of expending district funds to purchase signs that don't say, that don't advocate, but say school budget vote with a place where you can change the date so that they can be used over multiple years, and which sounds like a pretty good idea to me. Um, and again, informational, not advocacy, um, but I do not have that cost. Um, we have done these, we've done signs for graduates, um, and then there would be a question both of how many and what you, you know, how much you want to spend, um, because those can, those can probably would, would run in a similar kind of range. You won't have postage attached to it, but the creation of the sign. And, I have a contact with someone who has done this for a thousand I'm certainly willing to reach out to him and see 
I, yeah, I mean, again, I think anything, yeah. I'll, I just, I will say again that I know, at least in the town of Ludlow, um, if they are on public property, such as the yeah. green, they get taken down and stored. Um, you can go retrieve them, but they, they will get taken down on the daily. I control um, a large piece of private property. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, near, the, right. <laughs> near the school, you put a sign there, people are driving slowly by it to go pick up kids. And there's, I, like yes. I said before, you're welcome to, to get something put out there. I'm literally right next to Percy Park, and I'm the whole corner lot. So I'm just taking anything off my yard. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Um, okay, so we'll get an FAQ together and, and spread the word that way. We will have an information mailer, um, and Deb is going to look into some yard signs, and, um, you know, if anybody from CGs or whatever wants to, to get out information, they certainly are able to um, When, does anybody know when? absentee ballots would be available assuming we signed this tonight so uh, so assuming that that you all do yeah. this tonight we then uh we, then we have to post it in, in all of the places that it has to be posted and we have to prepare the ballots mm -hmm. and deliver them to the town clerk's offices Obviously, they can't send out anything as an absentee ballot until all of that has happened. My guess would be that, uh, assuming that we approve this tonight, that we would have something to them by the beginning of next week. And certainly, we might even have it by Friday, but we're not making promises. But certainly by the beginning of next week, and at that point, people can contact the town clerk's office and, and ask either to come in and fill it out if things are open or to have it mailed. One thing I think, um, because the hours of the polls are um, not um, convenient around school hours, um, one idea I had is like maybe a few, whenever the absentee voting is already in effect, so whenever parents can just walk into town hall and vote, um, a few mornings or um, afternoons at pickup. Um, can we like hand out flyers on the property of the school saying like you can go vote like today? You can give the information, absolutely. Okay, so that might be another way to catch parents doing pickup or drop off at both schools like one or two days, um, like handing out flyers to people because they could literally drive from school to town hall. So yes, if we know that the town hall is open on that day and people could walk in, get a ballot, and we said, yeah, we can give that information. <laughs> we can't tell people that they should. We can't tell people what they should vote, but we can give them the information that it's available. And Holly, of course, it's even closer. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. You have to go right past it to get to the school. <laughs> All right, so we have some ideas for outreach. Do we want to talk about the morning? Okay, well, even, it, oh, sorry. It seems like even though not everybody gets the Vermont Journal, they, many people do, do read it. And so um, you know, it seems like we ought to have something in there. So we, each, each of, the, oh, yeah, of, the, of the next three weeks, right? Uh, I, I think their deadline is, is what, yeah, Friday? I don't think that they'll do a budget vote within we can we can send a press release that says it's happened it is also useful for there to be a letter to the editor from a board member that says i want to tell you why you should vote yes for this you're allowed to do that we're about taking out name that's right we're taking an ad well if, an if we give them a press release that's chasing i mean yeah. there are paper records so we tell them we'd like you to run this Did they bury it no more editorial or, or they or have a page or whatever yeah well, i mean i think if, if we write something that's a, like more like a press release or, or, that says you know the board met this this and approved this this so it, so it's it's not only advocates you know it's it's news uh, you know, it says, you know, here's what here's what was approved. Here's you know, what we did on Monday and Wednesday and approved, and and here's when the vote will be. 
and then do some sort of follow up the next couple of weeks. Open my holiday chit chat. Usually it's around the 20th, I always think, yeah. And that'll come out. You know, it's time for it to be out. Yeah, right, right. right. I've done it. I haven't coordinated with any, you know, other than getting numbers from Cheryl and make sure I wasn't getting things too wrong. I mean, suppose I mean, say this person will. will yeah, I mean, who, who will do what? It, it, it's sort of, uh, yeah. it sounds like you want to write an editorial. So. Okay, okay. <laughs> it sounds like you write a plan for you. Yeah. No, right. No, I, mean, I can do what I mean, but I, think I shouldn't do sort of like all, if, all three, you know. Right? Right. So, yeah. Yeah, it's something different for each of you. Right. Well, I would agree with Dave. It's a good idea for people to leave here knowing who's doing what mm -hmm. rather than. Somebody's going to do something. Can you say that louder? I'm sorry. No, it's not very positive. A positive, observable, observable, or direct direction. Well, I think I volunteered <laughs> to do the FAQ thing yeah. and start spreading it. The central office is doing the mailer. That's Dave's great. going to do an editorial. Okay. And actually, I'll, I'll do two. First, first, I'll do an article. And, you know, more like a press release. Okay. Says the board met, you know, if, um, and here's what we approved. Right? Um, and send that to for both to the chit chat. Well, chit chat is the is just once, but I'll send it to the news flash, news flash yeah. um, yeah. and, and also to the journal. And, then, and I think the chit chat then, too. I mean, it doesn't hurt, right? right. Yeah. I'll also do something more like an editorial, just for me saying, well, yes. Can we send the FAQ to the chit chat? I think also, we can. I don't know if they will print the whole thing. Yeah, if it's too big, but we can certainly pull out. You know, I could talk to Diana and see. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> then the the other uh, uh, question I would have before we move on to the next thing is, is: Do you want to do you want to schedule? a meeting prior to the vote to go through what you have decided and yeah. to just check on it. You don't. Your next meeting is June 12th. Do we have an information no. meeting? You do. You'll have the informational meeting that will be the week before. Yeah. And, and if you're com comfortable, then that's plenty of time to go through it. I think that's, yeah. yeah. So does it have to be Within a week, or has to be at least a week. What, what's the the informational meeting? Right. Uh, no more than seven, no less than five. Okay. So mean? we do traditionally Mount Holly and Lobo have done their information meeting the the week, week before, seven days. Okay. so that they don't conflict with Green Mountain doing theirs five days before. Okay. So, so it's the day after Memorial Day. Right? That is what it is. It will it will be the evening. It okay. will be the twenty eighth. It will be May twenty. And uh, we would May be here. We'll still be here, yeah. I would say that six. That's when we have yeah. generally yeah. done it. Yeah. yeah. And again, you've got you've got a hand up from the public. Right. I thought we were holding off until public comment at the end, but it has taken a while, so I feel kind of bad. What do people think? Talk, sorry. If, if, if they want to talk about uh, outreach, let's do it now. Okay. Um, yeah, it's the person. I don't know the person online. Um, it was Andrea. Oh, okay. So let's do Millicent, Andrea, Lisa. Okay. Millicent and Nancy. Millicent and Nancy. For those of you that weren't here when I came in, this is Nancy. I brought her tonight as a demonstration. How many of you, when you first saw her, did a double take because you thought maybe it was a real child. <laughs> Quite a few, right? Yeah. It caught your eye. One of the things that I noticed when we were putting out lawns, lawn signs for the last two votes, they were very subtle and very easily missed. Yeah, too subtle. On the last vote, there were no signs that said, vote on such and such a gate. We missed an opportunity 
to get people interested in voting. Nancy can be a draw. If I put her at the end of my driveway with a lawn sign in front of her, do you think people are going to slow down? I have, I have four nice to five cars that come into our driveway every day to pick up raw milk and eggs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we have something along with a lawn sale that's going to get people to slow down and do a double take, then I think we'll get more interest. We only had a third of the people voting this last time. And the way you're going to get people voting is to have it out there. I know this is old tech. Everybody's wanting to do newsflash and... Um, QR codes and and that thing <laughs> at Facebook, but there's nothing wrong with old fashioned. No, 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 no. And it catches people's attention. No, no, no. Did it not catch your attention you tonight when you saw Nancy? Do you have any more of that? How many Nancy's? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody have any? She's a little stuff? young for school age, but actually she's 62. But uh, I don't tell her that. Oh, uh, great. But really, she is about the size of a of a preschooler. Yeah. But it would catch someone's attention. What time is it? You know, if it was the middle of winter, I'd say put a snowman at the end of your driveway. Um, put a scarecrow out there next to your sign. It's going to catch people's attention. Would the arms go up? Yeah. Could, could the the arms, you go up and do a sign. Put the sign in your arms. In your arms. Yeah. When she was young, she walked. <laughs> That's so anyway, that was the point that I wanted to make. Take a cool show. More aggressive. We we're going to do long sales. Long signs. Long signs. I agree. Thanks, Jay. And thanks, Nancy. <laughs> All right. Um, I forgot who I said second. Andrea. And Andrea, did you have something to say? He may have gone away. Sorry. The... All right. We said that if Andrea comes. Oh, Andrea's back. <laughs> Oh, now you're right. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. You're still so, though. Yep. Oh, we'll do Lisa. Which you should be, because you're driving. Oh, right. <laughs> That's all good. I was just going to suggest that in meetings, in the spirit of meeting students and people where they are in your FAQs and in your in your information and your editorials, this is how you register to vote, and this is how you, this is how you do an absentee ballot. Um, we we at our staff meeting yesterday, we were questioning, you know, how many of our parents are actually registered to vote. Um. So just just information on how you go about doing uh, doing that. Good idea. Thank you. Great. We talked about putting that in this week's newsletter. Yeah. Just because we don't we don't know. Can you still register mm -hmm. for a June board? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You can register, yeah, you can register yeah. on the spot. I think that day, but I'm going to go no. All you have to do right. is show up and uh, go to the town room. Yeah. Good night. Yeah. All right, any other outreach comments? All right, and then we're on to the morning, too. Let me read it. I'd be happy for you to read One eye. All right. Um, so, voting by Australian ballot, Ludlow Town Hall, Mount Holly Town Office, Tuesday, June 4th, 2024, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. The legal voters of Ludlow Mount Holly Unified Union School District, consisting of the towns of Ludlow, Town, and Ludlow Town. Yeah, look, it, this, sorry, consisting of the towns of Ludlow Town and Mount Holly, are hereby warned to meet at the respective polling places on Tuesday, the fourth of June, for the purpose of voting by Australian ballot. The business to be transacted include Article One. Shall the voters of Ludlow Mount Holly Unified Union School District approve the school board of directors to expend $8,812,561, which is the amount the school board of directors has determined to be necessary for the ensuing fiscal year? It is estimated that the proposed budget, if approved, will result in education spending of $12,786.11 for long-term weighted LTW equalized pupil approved in duly warned meeting on May 8th, 2024. And then we would sign it. 
Anybody hear anything that's not accurate? You have, you have to actually vote. Right. I just want to make sure before. Okay. Um, all right. So somebody want to make a motion? So made. Thank you. Second. And all those in favor of reading or the warning as read? Um, aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right, hearing none, it is approved and we shall sign it. And what we're going to do here is all of you who are here, the five members here will sign it. Craig is going to go scan that to our technology director, Lauren Baker, who will then uh, turn it into an electronically signable document and email it to Maria so that she can sign it as well. Okay. I say that because I have no idea where you would do that in this building, so yes. No <laughs> you just got mom and told. <laughs> um, all right. So any other discussion about the budget? We're all set with a warning. Maria, you'll get it soon. <clears throat> we'll let you know, maybe. Okay. Or will it be tomorrow? Because Lauren no, no, has it's to gonna do it. Go, it should, Lauren, Lauren's not in the meeting here, okay. but she should be available to do it. If you don't get it tonight, uh, you should get it you should get it by tomorrow. And that's true for you as well, Amber. Oh, well, Amber doesn't sign this one. Right. We did Green Mountain. Right. Sorry. Okay. Um, so we do have two policies for a second read, E1, fiscal management and general financial accountability. And G2, acceptable, responsible use of electronic resources and internet. Sorry, what did I say? <laughs> so much vision. Uh, yeah, we're second reading them, so they would be looking for adoption. Uh, anybody have thoughts or comments, questions mm -hmm. about them? Make a motion to approve V1 and G1. Second. Any discussion about G1 or, sorry, E1 or G11? All those in favor of approving uh, policies? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? All right. Um, new business. Limited school choice. And then we'll do the higher, the new higher. Do the higher, the higher first. first. Sure. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Okay. So we would like to um, recommend Christy Lazan. She is a teacher with about 10 years of experience. She's taught uh, at Randolph Elementary School, Forest Hill Memorial, and Rutland Town. She's taught pre-K, kindergarten, first grade, and second grade. Really excited about her ability to know where the kids are headed in terms of their development and skills. Um, she's uh, very... Um, just great personality, positive, and uh, he's very excited about our program that Jenna has so skillfully developed over the years. She's um, very much supportive of our outdoor classroom, and uh, yeah, just an excellent all in all. I met with her as well, and <coughs> certainly recommend her. I think she'll do a great job for us. What position is this? Oh, I'm sorry, Here's Here's you. You. this Jenna Lasso is. Uh, uh, going to be our I am. I was uh, intrigued by working at the forest yes, school. What's the yeah. forest school? Yeah. So it's it, it's like you know the way that we do a lot of our um, our preschool outside. Yeah. So we're right on the edge of the forest. So it's the, it's a kind of a general term for outdoor. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. She's yeah. Little, uh, yeah. She. I couldn't. She she ha she has she has her uh, K six uh, elementary school license and she has been working in a preschool for this year and so she's completed the first year of a division for preschool and she will finish that during the years that she's here and so she's she's doing exactly what she's supposed to perfect awesome. she already she has the provisional in hand right? yeah make a motion we hire second. Any other discussion about uh, Chris, Christine, Christina, Laszlo, Laszlo. All those in favor of hiring Christina? Aye, aye. Anybody opposed? 
Okay. Um, and then we'll go back to limited school choice. Yeah, we'll get this to Lauren Beaker. Thank you very much. Your week. Yeah, and, and like I said, Maria, she may get that to you immediately. It may also not, not if it doesn't come through until the morning, as soon as you get it, just sign. Okay. Okay, I will. Thank you. I'll send Lauren a quick heads up. Thank you. And thank you for approving the hire. It's wonderful to get in relevant positions taken care of with time to spare. All right. Uh, so um, I, I'm sorry, before we go on, um, for Amber's benefit, uh, Christina, C-R-I-S-T-I-N-A, and the last name is L-A-U-Z-O-N. Um, so our limited school choice process here we we did this we talked about this last year as well so the the program it is that every every year there can be up to six students from the green mountain unified school district can come to either ludlow mount holly or ludlow elementary school or mount holly school if there are open if there are available seats if somebody takes one of those seats then that seat is filled until they finish, uh, until they leave in sixth grade. And every year, up to six students who are live in Ludlow and Mount Holly can go to attend elementary schools in the Green Mountain Unified School District. Um, most years within Ludlow and Mount Holly, we have more students and more families who would like their kids to come here than we have slots for. And so over the last several years, sometimes, sometimes that's not true. There are, sometimes there are years where nobody's asking for it. Sometimes there are years when we've got plenty of food. Uh, in the last two years, we have had people who wanted to send their students here next year, more than we have an open uh, position for. We conduct a, a lottery. We put the names into an electronic device and pull, pull names out. And and then inform people that there isn't enough room. And as last year, we sometimes have families who want to come and ask the school board whether they are willing to open up another seat so that their children can come here. In previous years, when things were not so crowded in some of our classes, the, this board has approved it. Last year, this board did not because we were concerned about the classes. So we have a family that has requested and the and I, I let let you talk about it as well but we had a family that that has twins and had requested for both of them to uh, come to Ludlow um, in the lottery one of them was selected and so they would like to ask you uh, whether you are willing to consider opening up an additional position um, and these were the students. Uh, thank you. Um, and I don't know. Did you? Did anybody want to? Uh, uh, which grade? So it it was uh, going into going into first grade. They're currently in kindergarten, going into first grade, and wanted to know whether we would consider opening up an additional position within first grade. My statement was that it's a crowded class, and then I was not sure that that was something the board wanted to do, which we can have. My it's all, as you say, it's a big class. If they wanted to come to Mount Holly in that grade, you know, where we have 12 kids, then then sure, we have plenty of space. But I, mean, I, I guess I'd ask them, though. I mean, it, it would seem like adding, adding one to a, a class that's already 21 is, is, is more of a challenge. So, <laughs> you know, we. So, if someone were to move in the just into Ludlow, we would have no choice mm -hmm. but to take those students as they come and move into our um, school district. Right now, next year's first grade for one two classroom is a total of twenty students. So, what's another one? What's another two? Um, you know, 
really depends on the dynamics of the class, the needs that are currently in the class. Um, 22 at a primary classroom is a large number of students. Um, in most places, primary grades are typically capped at about 18, sometimes 20. So we're right at that place. Um, you know, we love kids. We have an excellent teacher coming in. Um, so, you know, you heard you heard community members talk about inequities in uh, sizes here at Mount Holly and sizes in Ludlow. That would put us at a class, a one-two class of 22 for next year. Seems like this could be. I mean, I hate to say no. Yeah, right, exactly. Okay. So I, I kind of feel like we're all in a position that we can't really refuse children in such a small school. It's, and if you got one, <clears throat> and in this particular, you've got twins, so it's like... If, if I, I'm, I'm, I'm reasonably certain that if you don't, if you, if you don't, they're not going to send you. Right. So and what happens are currently a family that lives and goes to school in Green Mountain District. Yes. And so they're just requesting to to utilize this program. Yes. That involves no money back and forth, correct? Yeah, that was correct. And so no, no, no. Okay. what happened? Yeah, half. Yeah, yeah. Half. Okay. Um, they don't they don't they don't they don't they, no, they okay. right. We so would receive the district, the right. The district. Right. Mm -hmm. um, no, I'm just trying to lay out facts, that's all. I'm not trying to sway. No. Uh, and so we would we would be looking at at allowing them to open up one more spot. Um, so there's 21 now? So there's currently 20. If okay. one student accepts that slot, okay. it would be 21 in that class. So what would it take to split the clips? Another teacher. Okay. You just approved the budget. Ludlow and Mount Holly are crying at the kids as in, the, in the total. And if 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 we don't uh, at least uh, look at that. Then you get people talking about closing schools then and stuff like that because there ain't enough kids in. Uh, I don't know what what what, it, what, it, what it take to bite the bullet somehow until maybe we can get our act together. I will do what the board feels. Power help or something like that or anything like that. Uh, what's, okay, well, not the recommendation. What's the cap size for these classes? For classroom. So we don't have one. We had a recommendation that that and and the the uh, the practice the guideline that this board agreed to was not about capping sizes. It was about hiring new teachers. It was if class sizes were not between thirteen and eighteen, you wouldn't automatically hire. We do not have a cap size. No, I'm talking about like from the state. Is there a cap size? Yeah. Do some yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, so I think there are any of the same education quality standards. At K3, true. fewer than 20, for 12, fewer than 25. But, but again, it's not a, and if you have 21, we shut your school down. These are the recommendations right. with an understanding that in this state, you frequently are outside of those. So it's a little bit dark. Yeah. Right. And we so, could have a family or three move in tomorrow that right. we don't know about and move that class to 25, and then we're going to need to start making other decisions. Right. Exactly. If it's 17 families can move out and make that a class of five, too. I, yeah. Right. We just don't know. You think at least, at least a theoretical option, as you said, as you said earlier, you have one extra teacher, right? You, instead of being a math teacher, you, you could break that into two classes, right? And I mean, and would you want to do that is, a, is well, the second question. Well, I could. Right. I could do that if it if it if it uh, were well, especially if you got if you got three more students, another family moved in, 
And so right. and then, then you know 25. that creates a domino effect. You know, we look at our math scores and we made a commitment to really yeah. building up a foundational skills in math and by splitting math instruction. And math instruction can happen in a multi-grade classroom and it can be done. Is it challenging? Absolutely. Are teachers having to work long hours to do so? Yep. Um, so trying to kind of, like you said, like Lisa had mentioned earlier, by having that person in that position of teaching math, it helps offset having those larger class sizes. If that person is, is then pulled to be a second one-two classroom teacher, well, then that takes care of the one, two, but you still have three, four, and five, six who now don't have that type of support to split out instructional um, foundational skill practice for some of those kids. So it's a catch, it's a really a catch 22. You can do it either way. It's great. So all you do is add 100,000 to the budget and we're all set. That's right. That's right. That's right. Um, I, I'm aware that the one-two teacher is brand new to the school, right, mm -hmm. um, in the first year. So uh, does this person come with a lot of classroom? I have they had a, um, I don't remember the resume. So the person coming in had been a preschool teacher at Buffalo Elementary School prior to going to work for the state. Um, she currently is a kindergarten teacher in the Springfield district and has done several long-term multi-grade classroom um, substitute teaching positions. She's not brand new. She's not brand she's new. Been she's been in the teaching team. profession for many, many, many years. Right. And she's taught in her school. It's basically right. school. But she's coming <laughs> into a new position. So new position, new curriculum, new programs, things, mm -hmm. you know, that you have to to I'm not really sure. I, I guess I, um, it, it doesn't feel like this is really a, a board decision to make to me because, um, I, well, it, that may be in our policy, right? Um, but I think when we grappled with this question last year, I felt like the the policy um, in some ways was, um, I don't think that um, if we have a process that's a lottery, um, I don't think that um, we should be in a position of deciding for people who were unsuccessful in the lottery, whether we will like make exceptions to that. Um, that to me feels like it's a policy that's too confining because we shouldn't have to review these exceptions every year, in my opinion. Like we should have a, a system that allows these decisions to, because so we heard the, the rationale about the sibling um, last year. It was also, there, there were some reasons, but in the lottery system, we don't have a reasons-based system. We have a lottery. And so like good, you know, reasons that seem like good or bad, um, if the lower phase of this process is blind to the reasons, I'm not sure why the reasons are important at board level. That, um, but the school board could, you could certainly make the decision, but you're not going to hear the decisions. That you are deciding that the law, that the, the, the policy is six people. And that's what it is, and it, 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 that is the agreement between the two towns. And you are not going. To, I mean, that, that and when I say it's the board's decision, it's it, it is the board's prerogative to entertain this decision or not. And if you entertain it, to decide yes or no. You're not required to entertain it. You could decide that you don't want to hear it. I mean, I, I think, well, so, that in, and that's a system that has been established by our own policies. Is that right? This, or is this like a state program? No, no this is us. Okay. This is us. 
So I think we ought to look at, I, this is to me as like a systems question. We should look at the policy because I, I don't think every year they should be coming up to the board. We should come up with a policy that accommodates um, you know, these the exception, you know, it, it doesn't have exception. It isn't. There have been years in which it's, you know, it didn't happen because there were openings or people didn't apply. So it's, I mean, your experience has been every year this has happened, yeah. but there certainly have been, I don't know for how long before I was here, and the first two years I was here, we didn't have this as, as, a, as a question, and I know that there have been previous years where this board has just said yes in years where this board has not had to hear anything about it because it didn't but we've also said no on a couple of years well, yeah, maybe year. oh, other so, years too yeah. yeah so I, i'm going to reflect back to last year and and say yeah last year i thought as well like okay we had a recommendation that we created 13 to 18. after this year i feel a little bit differently and seeing like how the push to the with the budget and the close the school consolidate the school what if you do this what if you do that i just feel like we don't have really the ability to say no now to your point maybe we could look at raising i mean six kids when we have like 65 in the whole school, we, we need the kids. I feel like we should welcome anybody that wants to be here, especially if we have room. I mean, it'd be a different story if we had, you know, class, all classrooms, you know, with 30 kids, and we don't. And I understand, but somebody gave me this as, as a way to look at it. Plymouth consolidated, 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 and now there's no school in Plymouth. So if we don't accept kids, and all we do is continue to consolidate, we're not going to have a school, and I don't want that. That's where I feel. Were there people, were there, was this year where people were turned away in the lottery, aside from the person who's asking for an exemption? Yes. Yeah. I, I believe we had... Um, I, well, I, I, I believe we, we have either four or five people who were looking to come in, and we only have two available positions. Four or five people right. said, I think it was four, said, we, we want to put our name in, we would like to be considered for this. And we've got, we don't have six open because people have been in. Mm -hmm. and, and so we have two open because last year we were full. And I, and I don't remember whether they were both kids who are, are leaving in sixth grade or whether somebody moved out or what the issue was. But we have two, two positions in our room. We have more of them. And, and what would happen here if you say that you don't want to open up another slot, in all likelihood, I can't really speak for the family, but in all likelihood, they would say, we're not going to send what? this one. And then we go back and do the lottery again for that second position with the two or three people who didn't do it. Hey, were they all for Ludlow? Yeah, the, the, the two who got in anyway. Okay, no, 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 but the, the other ones who, who, who didn't win the lottery? I, I don't know. Because it's not a six for Ludlow, six for Mount Holly, it's six for the district. Can I also just ask clarification? When we used to do it, there was a provision for families. Is that no longer in there or is it only there's not? Okay, at one point there was. And yet do I, I get that there's a lottery, but I'm looking also like any of these kids five six? We have a pretty small class from the five six, right? Okay. I believe that the lottery folks that I knew were all in the primary grades. Mm -hmm. And that, that well. which is which is usually the case because people are looking to have their students come to a different school when they are in kindergarten mm -hmm. or in first grade and then remain through sixth grade. Not always. There are only six kindergartners. Mm -hmm. I think we'll have eight next year. Oh, I know okay. the number said six, but I think we have eight. Mm -hmm. 
But of course, you know, summertime can come, we can wind up with 20 or we can yeah. wind up with four. Yeah. Kind of how it goes. Something you want to make a motion about the limited school choice. Or Whether we want to yeah. entertain it. Right. Is the first that, well, at, accepting this one additional student from the lottery. Well, at the time, this new lottery. This policy, there's not, no line in the sand. We decided to yep. come up with a policy. We can decide to change the policy. Uh, so there's no lines in the sand that make it uh, rock hard. And um, and I think that might be something to put on the list, like some other things for the future, in our like class size stuff, and whatever in the future. <coughs> in the meantime, um, you know, go ahead and put the emotions at me. I, I don't know why. Well, I, first of all, I don't know why us bureaucrats are going to make the decision. I'd rather see the school make the decision. And to that end, what's your recommendation? I feel that we're going to be tight with the number of students that we have in that That's class. a political answer. I know. <laughs> the, uh, uh, so ultimately, no. So I don't want to reach confidentiality based on some of the needs and things that are within that classroom. And knowing the makeup and configuration of the one to the next year, I think adding two more to the mix would make it a more difficult class to manage and to educate. Okay. I would like to do the vote in two parts. I would like to have the first, yeah, I don't know if this can be done. I would like to have the first vote where we um, vote on whether this is something that we want to consider. And then the second vote is if we want to consider it, whether we'll approve or reject. Consider make what? a motion. Consider to... the appeal for the, the oh, yeah. <clears throat> I'm Allison Singleton. I'm the mom of the twins. So I'm like oh, in okay. like the worst <laughs> position of my life between <laughs> choosing what to do here. Right now my kids are currently in Cavendish and they're in the classroom size 23 that used to be around eight to 10. So of course they're not, the teacher's not equipped to handle such class sizes. And I've like watched my twins now struggle with that. And I like live right on like near Ludlow. Like I see Ludlow and I chose to apply for the lottery for my twins. One of which got accepted. That's the reason why I came to the board. I'm not asking for my younger son to also now have a spot in the Lolo. Like they are same DNA. Like I, <laughs> like it's kind of hard. Like I can't have the heart to keep one here and one there. So that's why I was like, if I could just have the opportunity at least to like see how you guys would feel about like opening up another spot, just because. So you just mentioned that they're in a class of 23 right now. Yeah. And it's hard. Yeah, yeah, because so sure it hasn't like, so you were put to it. So now you're putting them into a class that's currently that already has twenty in. Twenty in. Yeah. So So you your class size is going to be very similar. There's not going to be very much different. Yeah, class size. the teacher has like more experience with dealing with bigger classes where like the like Cavendish elementary school, there's only eight puppies in the classroom. Like my kids' shoes are thrown everywhere because they're just not equipped to having <laughs> so 22 to 23 kids. So. <laughs> you know? well, that, well, that's pretty typical. And, like, you walk down our hallway, there's stuff everywhere. Yeah. yeah. We try and organize and push it against the wall. Then. So. It's about Holly feels too far. Yeah, about Holly definitely um, from our house about 30 minutes. Good try, Frank. Well, I was just <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to be welcoming, yeah. <laughs> but I, yeah. I, I, that's what I was assuming. Yeah, and please don't that. take what I'm saying as a personal. Problem. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard when it's your children. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And of course, like everything feels like it's under attack, you know, because it's like you just want the best for your kids. And in this case, like I never would have expected, like, because I like if if I saw twins, I got a lottery and one of them got accepted, I would have just chosen another kid <laughs> instead of putting the mom and the family in a position of being like, what do I really do here, you know? Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard. So. Does this vote have to be taken tonight? You can decide to do it on the, uh, another night if you want. 
Well, I'm, I'm only you thinking can, of. Uh, you can have more discussion about it. Uh, it, it yes, yeah, the budget. It, it's it's, it's, it's up it's to more. you. And just, um, you know, and to rather, your point, no, if there, this policy was not created by the state. It's not set in stone. This is a procedure that was put together quite some time ago. The number six was the number that people threw in there. It was, and you it could, was, it was yeah. based on the model was in true theory. And it was originally just an agreement. It's called a joint agreement between Truth Theory and Mahali. It's people like the idea, so it's slowly done. One of the other things we considered it back at the beginning was the numbers of kids leaving a particular school was important too to not have that disparity too between much. schools yeah. and that's the I mean I just feel like all of these things are coming into play I I am you know I don't have to vote these days so that's not a bad thing um, <laughs> I'll leave that on this one um, but I, I do hear what Julie's saying and, and maybe we need to revisit the agreement in the coming year um, but that doesn't put a a decision about tonight. I also don't think it would be fair uh, to ask mom to go home not knowing for another 30 days. Um, that's my opinion. Yeah. I just wish that's something would get done. Like, I, I wish that, like, give Cavendish and another teacher, give Ludlow another teacher, because obviously, like, people of, like, my, our generation are staying around Vermont, where, like, most people were leaving in the past. So, obviously, we're seeing that first grades are huge. You know, Cavendish is huge. And the thing is, is it's gonna work its way like that through the system, like through the whole school system. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's hard because now every classroom that just had 10 to 12 is now just gonna get this huge class all at once for first grade. And obviously every school is going through it. So I feel like something needs to get done to like do it better, I guess, you know? Like if, if we're having classes in every school of 22 to 20, whatever, like, I feel like if it's going to be hard in Lolo, it's going to be hard in Cavendish. Like, do we just let the kids suffer? <laughs> like, it's hard. Like, my kids are all so young, so I haven't really had to deal with any of this. So, like, I don't really know what to do. You know, like, it's just... It's would, you, would you rather some possibility emerge in, like, if they were to look at the big picture policy? Like, Kelly's worried about you having to wait in limbo for 30 days. Yeah. Would I mean, you rather not hear now? I just no. don't really know. Like, I don't know what, what to do. Like, it is also this, the case in Cavendish. They are, have been um, interviewing for a, 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 a additional teacher. So their plan is, because this is going to, because they had a class of 20 come That's into amazing. kindergarten. They expected seven, and they have 20. And so the next year's combined grade one and two is going to have 27 kids in it. That's not going to be a single class. It's going to be a class of two teachers. They're hiring an additional teacher. So it'll be half of 27. They'll decide whether they're having two teachers teach it, how they're going to right. configure that. But yeah, so it will be smaller. That's, that's how they're doing it, which has nothing to do with whether somebody wants to have their kid go to a different school yeah. for whatever and like i mean i own a business in cavendish like it's a huge like statement of me to pull my kids from cavendish to bring them to Lolo. and obviously i did all my research behind me before making that like bold decision you know because it's like it was a hard thing to do like no one wants to move their kids like from another school after they just started one year of school but i just felt like Lolo was able to provide the services that my kids needed that cavendish wasn't able to actually provide so the fact that one of them got in, I was like, I'm going to use this as a fighting chance to see if the board would allow for my his twin brother to come with him, you know? But, I mean, it's all obviously up to, to you guys. So. Dave. I have a question. Lisa, you made public comments before. Both of you indicated uh, the displeasure about the mix of teachers and classroom that Ludlow. If that were fixed, would that solve this problem? Would if you hire more teachers, you, you, you just need to hire the teachers. That's, I mean, that's yeah. what you're talking about. All the teachers are awesome. Mm -hmm. They just need no, no, no. no. I, I'm, yeah. I'm not trying to say the teachers. I mean, you you already raised a situation that Ludlow it, it was you felt to be untenable. There are other people who don't, Dave. I mean, I, I appreciate that, and I appreciate Lisa's position. 
Well, I'm going to push. I'm going to push on you to not say that Lisa's opinion of what's best in the classroom is the only thing. Thank you. <laughs> Lisa has great ideas. Thank you. But, it, but her opinion of whether classes should be combined or not combined <clears throat> is not the only one to take into account. That's fine. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, and of course, again, if there, as you say, if there was one more teacher, then you could decide how, how you know, is this teacher going to split time, you know, mm -hmm. are you going to exactly. divide them in groups, or are you going to, are you going to, in a lot of ways, you, 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 you could choose to work, to work it, but we don't have the money in the budget. For and yeah. what has yeah. generally yeah. happened here is, the decision, and to your point about reasons, the decision is usually based on, is the class big or small? by however people view big or small. And this board has said when the class sizes are small, <laughs> sure, we'll put in an additional one. And when the class sizes are big, by Vermont standards, then they don't put another student in. That's, that's how the decision has been made. You can decide that you're going to change it. You're going to put more people in. You're going to set rules and police for it. You can decide that you're not going to hear things. You can decide you're not going to decide tonight which is essentially deciding. You can decide that you're going to make changes to it for next year. But the, our process that we performed with a deadline of April 17th, by which point people make decisions about it, that has happened. And I, I, I would push back pretty hard. I, I know you've all sat in this room with me, listening to people talk about this budget and they've been through it failing twice. I'm finding the last minute discussion about maybe we want to hire more teachers a little hard to listen to yeah no that would get a year away uh, yeah. yes yeah. can you refresh our um, uh, memory about what the policy actually says about this process so it it, it's, it says that there is can you a call it up i'm not sure that i have you can you pull can you pull the document up Agreement. It's an agreement. It's not a. It's a joint contract. So it's mutually agreed upon between, between any two. Between Green Mountain and LMH. Yes, yes, in this case, it's a Green Mountain and LMH. But we also have one with the Millburger Schools. So what does it say about the board's authority here? Is what I'm curious about. Like, if you want to change the policy. No, no, I'm just wondering, if, like, uh, my, my first, I, my preference would be to take a first vote about whether this is even one issue. Uh, so I want to know what exactly the board's role is. So if there is nothing in it that says, I, I don't believe that there's anything in it that says the board will make these decisions. However, past practice over the last umpteen years has been that the board makes decisions. Okay, so this isn't it. I was under the impression this was a policy. The only things that are policies are things that the TRSU boards, the Green Mountain boards, and the Ludlow board vote in front of them, that they voted on in order to do it. It's, it, it is a... So like no, it's, a, it's a joint agreement. contract or an agreement, and it's like, it, I don't think it explicitly says this kind of thing is the board's mm -hmm. domain, right. so but I, like Lauren's saying, it has been the practice. Okay. And if you wanted to change it, my understanding is you can both, both entities, you can't unilaterally change Well, to change the content of it, okay. but I'm not sure that, that it has ever been the case, that there's ever been more people applying to go in the other direction. So there's no past practice about the Green Mountain Board yeah. having to make this decision. There's past practice about the Lago Mount Holly Board making this decision. Jamie. I want to make a motion to roll our to accept this and so I think I think what we need to hear is a motion. I just want to make sure that we're doing this legally, right? So you did not make a motion. You asked a question. Are you making a motion that we vote right now? So then you would need to make a motion on whether you want to allow this or not, and people would vote on. Yes. I, I think there's a question. I mean, we can have a discussion on the motion. Before. Yeah. Okay. And, and then we, I feel like we should put this on the agenda or, or right. maybe another time. So, what what motion do you want to make? <laughs> I'd like to address this issue. So, I want to make motion to.
Well, my, my uh, allow, allow the student. Allow the student, right. yes. Okay, that, so the motion is, from what I'm understanding, <laughs> to be clear, that you are making a motion that we approve allowing the additional sibling to join the Lelo School District. Yes. We make a motion to allow the additional student to join the Lelo Elementary School. Okay, so now that we have a motion, do we have a second? Oh, sorry. Thank you. And now do we have discussion? Julie. Um, I would like to first take a vote about whether the board ought to be voting on this question or whether this is a question that the uh, administration ought to resolve. So I think we have to first vote on the motion that's on the table. But that's a dis aren't we, aren't we dis so, um. So they would have to fail. Yeah, okay. And then you could make So yes, I, I guess I would, I would vote against this in the order of this. Um, against that motion, my position would be I would vote against that motion, and I would like to take a vote on the pro what I view as a preliminary question about the board's involvement in this. That's my <coughs> Have we found the document? No. So, so what the the letter that is sent out to be it, it says limited school transfer program. Schools included in the program are Chester Andover Elementary School, Cavendish Town Elementary School, Ludlow Elementary School, and Mount Holly Elementary School. This application has to be submitted by the end of the business day on April 17th, 2023. This uh, from last year, but would have been uh, 24 this year. The application will then be forwarded to the requested receiving school. If an opening is available, the school will then contact you directly within five business days. Each school involved will accept students on the basis of space available, taking into consideration such factors as class size and class profiles. Under this program, six students from each school district may transfer to an elementary school in the other school. If more students apply than there are slots available, a lottery will be conducted. If you are not selected in the lottery and an opening does come avail does not come available during the school year, you must complete a separate application for any other academic year for which you would like to be considered to participate in the limited school choice. That's uh, and and I believe that there is somewhere else a longer document that that, that was signed by the people in who were then in. Green Mountain, uh, the Green Mountain schools. This was put together before the districts existed. Yes. So they believe there is a document that was signed by the people for the responsible for those four schools making this agreement. And there is not, so, yeah, we can go and look at it. There's not abundant detail about it because in general, it's not been anything that needed to be a contentious or difficult thing. There's generally been Fewer people were wanting it when there were slots available, mm -hmm. and on the rare occasions when there were more, it felt as though it was relatively straightforward to resolve. It makes complete sense given that we've now had two years in a row in which it is a difficult decision to want to put some more procedures in about the system, when I, which well, doesn't change that here we are. So when I look at it, like, to me it seems like the we have, as a board, have set a precedent of this has been the procedure in which we have conducted it, whether it's written or it's not. So, the, within the precedent of how it's been conducted, I would like to take this vote and then put this on an agenda or another, whether it's a committee that we create or something else. That's how I'm okay, So, we will vote on Jamie's motion. If it were to fail, we could go to your motion and then revote if appropriate. So all those in favor of Jamie's motion, which is to allow the additional sibling, please raise your hand or say aye. aye. All those opposed? Uh, I'm, I have to be sorry. Yeah. So we have three, we have to do a roll yeah, call. We have good. three to two. Um, so roll call. Ah, uh, Jane. Ah, uh, yes. Dave. Right. Julie. Yes. No. 
Dave. Maria. No. Did the vote just change? Okay. No. I have to Kelly. Talk. Yes. Kelly, I didn't I didn't hear either of the Dave's votes. Dave Venter. Right, yes. And yeah, both Dave's were yes. Okay, thank you. And the count is three yeses to two no's. So the motion carries. You know what? What? I don't have to, and it's not a tie, so I'm good. I can be a fence sitter. Um, so the motion carries. So that means that we have the additional slot for the yes. six. Yeah. That was the motion. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right. So that is that. Um, Did you follow on motion to do something with this? Whole no, thing? because it's it no longer no, is. is the first right. one passed. No, I mean right. about redoing the whole. We'll just have to put it on an agenda. Okay. Yeah. Which I think I thought we'd had. Uh, uh, I thought we did it more often, but. Um, uh, higher we did. It's moving on to committee reports. Um, just to tell me before you start that Lauren Baker has um, emailed me that Maria received this and has signed it. So this, this document's complete. Awesome. We will get it, we'll get it sent out, put the ballots together. So then hopefully by Monday at the latest, people should be. I mean, they may take longer than that to get Thanks, to Melissa. all of the board clerks because not all of the boards are open every day. But as soon as we can get to all of the board clerks, we should be able to have absentee ballots. All right, TRSU board report was mostly discussion about budget. Uh, anything else that I'm not remembering, Laura? From TRSU. <laughs> Um, mostly yeah, mostly budget. Um, I'm sorry. That's okay. Can we wait? Yeah. Um, Wayne Millington. Sorry, I had Millicent on the brain and I couldn't switch. Um, <laughs> I knew it wasn't right. Um, did join us as as. Uh, public at the meeting, and we mostly talked about budget. Uh, policy committee, I don't know that has the policy The committee policy met. committee meets uh, next Monday. Uh, it, it has not met since Thursday. Yeah. yeah. So Monday, May 13th, the policy committee will be uh, Facilities committee has yeah. not met. It met, well, oh. yours has met. Right. Right. Um, and then I did go to the RVTC, but that's not one that we necessarily list. Um, but it was a nice meeting. Um, I learned some things. It was a lot of uh, different than what I expected. So I'll I think, I think on that. I pulled that because, yeah, because nobody, last month yeah. nobody, nobody was went. Sent. Yeah. But we'll add it to the list of okay. our And it, again, it happens on the night of our informational meeting. So. Maybe I won't have anything to say then. <laughs> um, policy is approved at this meeting. We did approve E1 and G11. And any other public comment? Final public comments. Anything online? I'll, I'll just say, I, and what Mary else said, I totally support the budget. I always have supported the school budgets, um, and I do think we're we're doing a, a great job at these schools. Um, but I do think it's something that you need to that you need to look at. The equity, the, the equity, equity thank you. Of, the, was, of the class right. of the class sizes. Um, but totally in support of everything that's going on and school budgets and um, all that. Thanks thank for you. Your work. Um. The comments. Uh, next regular meeting is June twelfth. We do have our informational meeting May twenty eighth, um, and our vote on June fourth. Yes. Um, and nothing else in between at this point. So that meeting will be 
in Ludlow, and of course on Zoom. And then our board self-evaluation. We were given and read our materials. Board members mm -hmm. were respectful of the public and the administration and each other. Yes. Uh, board members handled it's conflict so openly and constructively. Yes. Uh, we it's focused on the roles and the responsibility of the board. We hope. Um, <laughs> board members acted as a team once a decision had been made and worked collaborative, collaboratively throughout the decision-making process. Yes. All right. All right. Somebody want to second that motion? <laughs> second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right.